Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you a processing video. I have my uh, end result already on the screen um, and this is the Crescent Nebula NGC 6668. Is it or is it? No, it's the other way around. It's NGC 6888. But um, it's not the Crescent Nebula I was after for this, uh, this little uh, nice image. It is actually something to the left of the Crescent Nebula. There is a small kind of bubble over here known as the soap bubble. And what astounds me is that this object was not seen earlier than 2008. I think one of the reasons is that technology has progressed in such a way that this object suddenly became within the reach of amateurs. Although it is quite close to the pretty well-known NGC 6888 Crescent Nebula, um, probably nobody saw it before. Okay, so future me here. I'm editing this video and uh, it turns out that it is going to be too long. So I'm going to cut this into two parts. Part one will be about doing things in Cyril and part two will be about doing things in Photoshop. Let's, uh, let's see how I got to this uh, image. And um, one thing I might want to start with as well is that uh, this process, uh, th th this result that I'm showing you now is not really that good. At least I don't think it's that good. Uh, reason being that, uh, yeah, if I look at uh, locations, let me zoom in on it a bit. I want to zoom in on the right side for instance these stars over here are just awful uh, i think i messed up with one of the steps within the process so uh, perhaps at the end of this video i get an even better result but the reason for this video is just to show yeah what i did how i got to this point and um, yeah what is necessary to create an SHO palette image. This is the Hubble palette. Um, S stands for sulfur, H for the hydrogen, and O for oxygen. The three types of uh, gas that are really abundant in the, uh, in the universe. And when they are energized, they become ionized and the light that it then emits has these uh, yeah, specific bandwidth that my uh, narrow band filters that I used are specifically uh, designed to only pass through that specific uh, wavelength bandwidth. Um, a uh, whole technical story, um, I think there are many other people who can explain that much better than I can uh, if you look them up on, uh, on YouTube. This video is about the process. I'm going to use a few pieces of software. Um, Cyril, of course, my favorite piece of software for astrophotography. I'm also going to use Photoshop and I'm going to use something called StarNet. Plus plus. And this tool, Starnet++, plus plus, is used to remove the stars from the images. And by doing so, I can work on the nebulosity specifically and then add in the stars later. But without further ado, let's just start the process. Um, so I have my data here. I shot the HA on 
the, uh, the 8th of May. Uh, 03 I did on the 2nd of June and last Thursday, it was the 4th of June, I shot the sulfur data. The sulfur data, by the way, was on a night where, well, it was not that perfect. The, uh, there was a lot of cirrus clouds in the, uh, in the, uh, in the sky. And yeah, well, the, these images are not really pretty. As you can see here, this is just one single sub, of course. Um, but yeah, we will see uh, the stacked version later on. Of course, to create a proper image, we will need flats as well, because I don't want any dust modes or any uh, imperfect, imperfect imperfections, that's the word, uh, any uh, imperfections to show up in the end result. You'll not see me uh, use darks, and that is because I am using the ASI 2600 mono camera and this camera doesn't have any amp glow or so whatsoever and I should take darks so don't take my word for it that you sh can get rid of shooting the darks but I am doing that specific uh, sin <laughs> uh, I'm not shooting darks because yeah I get away with it uh, I did shoot bias, but I didn't do this on this specific session. I did that a long time ago when I just got the camera and I use this master bias file all the, way, all the time. So uh, you'll see me do that as well. I'll uh, get to that immediately because first we're going to prepare the flats. So the flats I shot on uh, for this specific data set, the camera wasn't rotated or whatsoever. Uh, Everything was still intact, so I can use those flats. They were shot on uh, the 3rd of May. So let's find the H-alpha flats. So that are these. Um, this was the last one, yep. So I have 30 flats. And I'm going to simply select them all in the uh, Explorer and I'm going to drag them to the conversion tab on uh, on Cyril. I will name them. So these are the flats H and I can uh, click convert and uh, one important thing that makes life a whole lot easier uh, is that I click the uh, symbolic link checkbox. For this if you are on Windows for instance you will have to set your Windows uh, computer to development mode. Um, not sure if I have shown that, but uh, uh, on the Cyril website there are many tutorials and one of them specifically is uh, yeah, showing you what to click and where to click in Windows to, uh, to get Windows into the development mode, which is necessary to use the symbolic link. It will create a link to the actual file so it doesn't take up that much hard disk space. I'm going to click convert. This will be very quick as it is not actually copying stuff. It is only creating that link. So I have now a sequence, a sequence called Fletch, Fletch, Flats H dot sequence. And I'm going to have to pre-process them. I'm going to uh, use that uh, master bias that I just mentioned uh, to uh, to make sure that uh, uh, the files are uh, properly um, calibrated. My master bias is in my calibration folder, which is here, ASI 2600MM Pro, and I'm using the master bias. And I can just simply click start pre-processing, which will be rather quickly as well. So there we have it. Um, I do not need to register them because it's flats. There are no stars in them. 
I don't care about the plot, uh, so I just simply can immediately go to the stacking tab. If you want to stack flats, you will have to not uh, use additive with scaling, but you want to select multiplicative. Multipli multi you know what I mean, it's on the screen. <laughs> and uh, winterized sigma clipping is needed to make sure that yeah, some specks of, I don't know, things moving in the images are just ignored. So we'll stack them. And when it's done, I can uh, go to the next set of flats. So we have S, H and O. I now have done H, so I only have to look up the S and the O again. Um, the conversion tab is where we started, so that is where we will uh, go again for the uh, sulfur data. I can remove these files from the list, I don't need them anymore. And I can look up the S data, uh, I mean the S flats. So here we have the flats, um, S is over here. 30 again, that's how I set my ASI air um, to shoot the flats. Let's rename this flats S because this is the silver. And I'll do the same trick again. So now we need to go back to the conversion tab because now we're going to load in the lights. Let's start with the uh, H-alpha. I shot those first, so let's use them first. I can just simply select them all. And I tend to name these uh, like the object NG NGC 68888. Uh, I have 40 subs. I know that they were 300 seconds each and I will name this HA or well, let's do H. I can click convert again. This time however in the pre-processing tab we're going to do something else because we will leave the um, master bias selected but I will also now select the appropriate flat. So I can click the button, I can uh, start typing STA from the word stacked so the list of files will be filtered for only files that have that in their name and I can select the uh, hydrogen alpha flats. I'm using the master bias and not the darks. If I would leave out the master bias I would get an improperly calibrated uh, set of lights. So that is why I select the master bias here as well. Again, a whole story that can be uh, told about this, but uh, if you look up the information on the Cyril website, it's all there, fully explained with much more clarity than I can possibly give. Offset and flat have been selected. I can click start pre-processing. This will take a small bit longer but not that long actually. Now we have images with stars in them. You don't see them here, but if I put this uh, selection, this pull down to the auto stretch value, then you will see actually one of the uh, lights. And in this case, stars means that we can properly align all the different files within the uh, sequence. And this is done by registering them uh, I can leave everything in the default settings. I can just simply click the register button. It will do its calculations. And if it's done, then in the plot tab, I can see the quality of the individual subs within this uh, stack, within this sequence. Okay. So registration is done. And now in the plot, we see uh, some useful information. So this star here, um, I mean this sub here, apparently has some non-round stars. 
I can click it, I can show the frame. Um, this window is now in the way. Uh, I think something here is um, perhaps a little bit moved or something. Uh, stars are ever so slightly elongated here. I can uh, right click it and exclude the frame from the sequence if I, if I like. But I'm not going to mess with it uh, uh, too much. This one I can exclude, but I'm not going to uh, go over all them. Uh, let's exclude this one as well. Well, and if, I, if we are going to do that, let's exclude this one as well. Okay. Um, we're going into the stacking tab and now multiplicative, hey, I did it right, is going to be set back to the additive with scaling because this is how usually lights need to get stacked. Um, I have 37 of the 40 uh, now in the uh, stack, so I'm going to change this file name to 37. Um, everything else I leave as it is and I can just simply click start stacking and there we go and we see a nice image over here if we uh, zoom in on it you can already see that bubble um, the uh, crescent itself is pretty nice um, yeah really liking it and uh, to get back to that thing that I mentioned before the stars are a bit weird and wonky already, but that is because of uh, probably some tilt in the in the system, or uh, more likely even uh, incorrect incorrect back focus. Again, a whole different story. Something that might be suitable for a different video altogether. We have done H8, let's get back to the conversion tab and now we are going to do the next set of lights, which was the oxygen data. Same story, drag it up to this. I'm going to name this 38 times 300 seconds. Because I have 38 files loaded, I can click convert so we have now 38 files in the sequence for the oxygen. I'm going to pre-process them. This time I need to select a different flat because we will need to use the oxygen flats, of course. Let's pre-process them. Yep. And we can go into the registration tab. Again, I simply click the blue button. Okay, how much files do we have? 37. So let's change this into a 37 and click the start stacking button. And then we wait again. This oxygen data for the crescent nebula will show a totally different shape of the object as in the H alpha that we've seen before. As you can see there is this lobe that is extending or ex extruding the main object here which is uh, something you only see in the oxygen data and the bubble itself it's uh, very blue if you look up other images and apparently this is also something very strong strong in uh, in oxygen and not in S2 as we will see in a bit because we have uh, now resulted into this uh, stacked file we're not now going to clear the conversion tab again and we will now end up with stacking the S2 data I guess you are no uh, you already know now uh, what I'm going to do I'm going to click the blue button it's all clicking blue buttons all the time I will select the stacked flats for sulfur click the blue button again then some waiting okay it has been pre-processed 
Now we're going into the register step. Okay, registration is done. This is the plot again. Uh, I don't see any reason to uh, to dive into the um, the quality now. I'm just simply going to click the stacking tab. Uh, 38, 38, yeah, start stacking. After this stack has been uh, completed, then we will have um, basically three stacked results. Not counting those uh, flat stacks. Those were only used to get to these three stacks. I will have SHO, sulfur, hydrogen, oxygen. But these three um, stacks are all the result of uh, three different nights. And because I am using dithering on the uh, telescope mount, the image is yeah, changed um, in position ever so slightly um, in those three color channels. What I need to do is I will have to load the S, H and O files as well into their own sequence and go and register those. That way the stars in the three channels are all in the same uh, position um, for the three uh, images. Uh, by the way, in the meantime, the stack has uh, succeeded. And um, yeah, as I said before, the uh, um, bubble nebula is not visible at all in the S2 data. I can also see a whole lot more noise in this image, which is, I think, probably due to the clouds again. Um, the Crescent Nebula is a bit visible, but not as uh, clearly as in the, as in the H alpha and the oxygen data. And there are some um, wisp, wisp of, of cloudiness uh, in the image uh, as well. Um, as I said, let's get back to the conversion tab. And now let's load the S, H and O stack into their own sequence. So I will type stack again and I will do it in the uh, correct order. So S H O. First the S, then the H, and then the O. And I do this because when I yeah when, when I register it it will result into three files, but they will not have that name S, H and O in them. Uh, they will simply be numbered. But because I know it is S, H, O, I know that number one is the S, number two the H, and you can guess what number three is. So I can just click on the register button. It will do that registration of where the stars are in those three channels, and I will have those uh, three files. So now we have three files, but these three files are still not stretched. Um, I'm not going to bother with all kinds of fancy uh, stuff with um, creating uh, specific stretches for uh, these uh, three channels. I just will do it in not that good uh, manner, but yeah, you'll see what I do here. So let's uh, get to the uh, one file. One is the S, the sulfur. You might have noticed that I put this into linear again. So I will see a black screen. Uh, there's a star here and a star here, but there's no detail because I need to stretch it. So in image processing, I can go into histogram transformation and I just simply click this button here, which will apply that same auto stretch that I did before, but now it has been applied to the image and I can now save it. So this is S. I will name it a TIFF file because the next step will be that Starnet++ to remove these stars. Starnet++ by the way only knows how to use 16-bit unsigned integer files so I click that and I will save it. And I'll do the same for the 
uh, H and the O. Okay, we're done. Well, almost. So that was part one. In the next episode, we will remove the stars using Starnet++ and we will combine everything into this nice SHO palette in Photoshop. So see you in the next episode.